number 25. An isosceles right triangle has a perimeter of 94 plus 94 square root of 2 inches. What is the length in inches of one leg of this triangle? Oh my goodness, the answer they gave for this one. I am whew, I'm not a fan of their method. I think it's cumbersome. I think it's um, unnecessarily difficult. I'm going to show you my method instead. <laughs> if anyone would like a video uh, specifically focusing on, on their method, I can maybe think about doing one on that. But, you know, I'm going to show you my way. I think it's a little, a little better, frankly. All right. An isosceles right triangle. So isosceles right triangle is a 45-45 90 right triangle. Hopefully you've been uh, told in your classes that there is this pattern for the legs of a right triangle that if the two legs, we call them both A, then the hypotenuse would be A times the square root of 2. Now, we add all those together to get the perimeter, right? Because we're told here we have a perimeter of 94 plus 94 square root of 2. Now, your initial thought might be I'm like, oh, it's going to be really simple. It's going to be these two added together, and then a square root of 2 is right there. Okay, it's not, because let's look at what would happen here. If this 94 square root of 2 is representing this, because, okay, just a little side note here. Remember, perimeter would be these two added together, and then we'd add that one. So we would have a plus a, and then we would have that a times the square root of 2. So we would have 2a plus a times the square root of 2. So you have two things being added together. And they're always going to be separate because one of them is going to be the odd one out with here. Now we're told this triangle has a perimeter 94 plus 94 times the square root of 2. And you might immediately think like, okay, so that corresponds to that and the a square root of 2 corresponds to that. Does it though? Because what would that mean? If a times the square root of 2 is this, then that a would be 94. And this term should be equal to 2 times 94, but it's not. It's not. So you go, huh, okay, that's a little odd. So what could it be? What if they're the opposite? What if this is equal to a times the square root of 2, and this is equal to 2 times a. Because it's going to be two separate things. There's a square root of 2 involved. You're not going to be able to combine this part and this part. It's going to be weird. You know, it's just not going to add cleanly. Something's going to go awry. It just is, every time. If we're not using decimals, we're just using square roots. It's going to be separate. But as we've just said, it is not a direct corresponding. It's Honestly, it's the only option. It has to be the other way. This one has to be equal to 2 times a. And this one has to be equal to a times the square root of 2. But let's test that theory. Let's see if we're down the right path. If this is equal to 2 times a, let's divide it by 2. So 94 square root of 2 it's equal to 2 times a. We want to find what a is. We need to divide it by 2. So I can divide that 94 by 2, and I get 47 times the square root of 2 for a. Well, let's see if this works. If I say that a is 47 times the square root of 2, then... To get to the hypotenuse, I would need to multiply my a, 47 square root of 2, times another square root of 2. The little line there dividing those two, those are separate things. So let's try that. Let's see if it works. 47 times the square root of 2 is my a. And to get the hypotenuse, I need to multiply it by another square root of 2. So I can split those a little bit, separate them. 47 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. When you multiply the square root of a number by that same square root, you just get the number. It undoes the square root. So square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. So 47 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be 47 times 2, or 
94. So I'm saying then that this side up here is 94. Now, let's see if this works. I've said that the perimeter would be adding these together. 47 square root of 2 plus 47 square root of 2 plus 94. 47 square root of 2 plus 47 square root of 2. You treat the square roots of 2 in this case like x's because you're adding them. So 47 x's plus 47 x's would give you 94 x's. 47 square roots of 2 plus 47 square roots of 2 gives you 94 square roots of 2. And then I would add the hypotenuse, which is 94. Those match. We are correct. The leg is 47 times the square root of 2. That's it. B is our answer. The way that they do it on the, the answer key, when I looked at it, I was just curious to see how, how they approached it. I always check their answers out even after I do it myself. Um, it's a mess, frankly. It's it's a lot, and it's it's not wrong. Obviously, it's not wrong. It is definitely a way you can do it, but it involves... You're like dividing both sides. Uh, yeah, it's just, you end up with rational expressions. You're having to simplify the rational expressions. And I can't imagine how long it's going to take you on on the test to do it. Um, they end up, they call like one leg L. So it's like L plus L plus L square root of 2 equals 94 plus 94 square root of 2. And it just, it gets, it gets really crazy. It gets really wonky. So again, if you want me to go into that, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to, I think it's more confusing than helpful, frankly. And I think kind of looking at it this way and because I've seen this before, this exact same pro type of problem, I've seen it before where they swap it, where they make you think, you know, that you've got this, you know, two a plus a squared of two, but they're being, woo, we're being fun. And they're swapping it. And this is really the 2a. And this is the a times the square root of 2. So honestly, if you learn to recognize it and you and you see this, you know, you'll know how to do it. But their, their little method, again, if you really want me to, to see me go through it all and like simplifying the rational expressions and all the stuff that they did, leave a comment below and, and I'll see about doing it. But at the moment, I think it's more harmful than beneficial. Hey guys, if this was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know so I can keep helping you and others like you. Comment, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Also, if you're interested in practical or fun math-related items like this math clock or this hopefully humorous t-shirt, click on the links down below to check out my Spreadshop and Etsy stores. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.